Good day to all, Brumbeck here for another review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the very long titled Anima, Gate of Memories, The Nameless Chronicles. That title may not make sense at first, but it actually does within the context of the entire game. Let me note I've been hired by Dark Side of Gaming to do a written review, and this is the video review I just do for the fun of it, for your pleasure. So if you want more details and want to support me, please click the link in the description to the full written review that has more details. And as before in this video series, I aim to keep this review under five minutes because we're all busy, so let's just get to it. What is this anima game about? This place... No, it can't be. Yes, indeed. Anima is a low-budget game made by three primary developers, which is pretty insane. It aims to be a combination of Devil May Cry, Nier, and the super hard challenge of Dark Souls. This game is actually from the perspective of a character that was in the first game, who is a boss, kind of a bad guy, but now you're playing his story to find out who he is, this guy called The Nameless. And when you're thrown into the world, it's very confusing, there's lots of names and places and people that make no sense at first, but as you play, it actually becomes much more engrossing. And hey, let's just jump into the combat like you're seeing on the screen right now. Yeah, as you can see, the combat is a bit messy. Your character has a huge dodge range, and you do these lunge attacks at enemies, and the camera spins around kind of crazily, and so it's it's got low-budget issues, for sure. And the game is actually quite dark, lighting-wise, which makes it tricky to see what's going on at times. Oh, hello. Apparently you're not an enemy. Sorry. This is... Ephedria's Whatever, buddy. So what's the good things about this game? Well, you wander around this hub that connects three different worlds, and you explore these worlds to find memories to unlock information about the bosses, which are needed for story reasons. Here's a brief tidbit of the backstories of one of the bosses. So as you can see, it presents it in text format with some really amazing music, which by the way, the music in this game is phenomenal. So good. And the main draw of this game is absolutely the story and finding out how did you get stuck in this weird tower with these weird bosses, with these weird memories. Speaking of weird, there's a lot of strange and interesting characters you meet in this game, and interacting with them, and speaking with them, and finding out their story, and finding out why you are here, is part of the huge draw of this game. The only thing that matters is that I have no intention of facing you. And what is this place? Do you know what is happening in it? The name this place receives is the Tower of Arcane. As for the rest, I'm really not sure. All right, dear friends, halfway done with the review, so it sounds like there's some good points. The story, the backstories of the bosses, the characters, they grow on you, but what about the bad? Let's get to it. Okay, by far the biggest problem is the huge difficulty spikes in this game and the unbalanced combat. I wish the game was more balanced, but it's simply not. Sometimes it's fine when you're just dealing with simple enemies. But then there's the camera that flails about, and the ranged enemies that bombard you with attacks. Look at this. Eh, eh, the flames! Why, why? Hey, stop shooting! Hey, stop it! Flame guys, stop it! Stop, just, stop shooting at me! Hey, everyone, just calm down! Stop the flames! It's too dark, I can't see what's going on! That, dear friends, is what went through my head most of the time. Perhaps it's my problem. But seriously, the combat in this game can be very unbalanced, and the boss battles in particular are super difficult. Yet many players will simply not be able to progress. They will get stuck at a boss battle and get infuriated and rage quit. I mean, this game is very difficult, sometimes for annoying reasons, like spamming ranged attacks, and the bosses will do these super moves over and over and over. <laughs> The end result is simply too messy. With all that being said, if you love a challenge, some of these boss battles that take 10 minutes and have back-to-back -back bosses will definitely challenge you. But enough about the combat, what's the final verdict? There's truly an engaging story here, with interesting characters that are worth exploring. And the second game is paced so much better than the first game, so I'd recommend play the second, and then if you really love the story, go and play the first. You are the one who does not understand. This is more than a mere monster hunt. 
My real hope for this game is that they can take the amazing concepts and the great characters here and they can expand it with a higher budget and a more beautiful world and a more realized full experience for a third game. Until then, what you have here, like I say in the written review, is a rough gem at a budget price, and it's worth playing if you have a soft spot for scrappy labors of love, and can overlook the extreme difficulty at times. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Please go to the full written review if you want more details on the Dark Side of Gaming website. The link is in the description, and we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!